Hey there, this is Tony. We're going to do a R10 Advanced uh, unboxing video. So, here goes. This looks to be the electronics package. BDXB transmitter. Transmitter receiver that would mount on the uh, R10. The thalamus. And that's the hypo. You can see the XB transmitter receiver on there. And the uh, connecting cable. Controllers mounted to the frame components. Let's cut this open and get a look. probably do an assembly video as well. Maybe some kind of a time lapse thing, but looking at something like this. And although there's four cross members, we're gonna do three and then I've got a camera uh, mount that I purchased that uh, you guys know about, but I uh, bought that and I'll be mounting that on the front side. So we have here is we're going to have to cut the shrink wrap away and then add the insulation to prevent any shorts between the grounded frame uh, and the speed controllers where on some of them it's said that there's blobs of uh, solder that are penetrating underneath here and touching the frame and thereby causing the shorts. So we'll take a closer look at that later. Props. Let's see, make sure these are see, clockwise and counterclockwise. So I have plenty of those, so it'll be a good thing. I'll probably pick up some additional spares, but good to see. Okay, a card includes a personal coupon code without a code, but I think they, uh, uh, they'll be discussing that in the forum. And then we've got our pieces here. If I look, we've got the frame pack with the ESCs. We've got the counterclockwise and clockwise propeller packs. The thalamus mounting pack, which I wonder where that is. We'll have to see and make sure we have that. Um, the landing gear, the motor mounts. Motor mounts are right here, landing gear. There. Uh, small motor, large motor, zero. Telemetry pack, RX and ultrasound, thalamus, hypohypix, uh, battery, and in my case I don't have the controller. So let's take a look here. We've got the thalamus, hypo, and hypix. This is the ultrasound package. I'll open that in a minute. Motor mounts, pneumatic landing gear. I am 
going to assume then that this is the, uh, well, that can't be. That's the battery and the uh, cables. More about pack, obviously, here. And this is the camera pack. So I think we have everything, but uh, we'll, we'll make sure it matches up after I uh, break open the parts. So here's the battery. Uh, Turnigy 2.2 amp. Uh, I discharge 25 to 35 C discharge. So this is pretty decent battery. I've got a whole bunch of other ones that I'll probably be using, but it uh, doesn't hurt to have another one. Uh, but uh, I like the Turnigy's and uh, I like the price, so it's a good battery. This would be the Lycra pack that uh, there are instructions on how to uh, attach the little adhesive Velcro pads so that these pieces can be slipped over to cover the electronics. I'm going to put those in here. Pneumatic landing gear. And we continue with something new. Pretty straightforward. You can see that that's uh, a shock absorber type damper. Put those in here. Mounting. I see the propeller spinners in here as well. I've got four of those, which is exactly what we need. So we'll put these these spinners with the propellers. Let's take a look at the motor. All right, so. feel for how big those are. Those are actually, in a, in a relative sense, for hobby hobby stuff, they're pretty sizable motors and they're definitely going to uh, gonna put a lot of power uh, onto the R10. See this right down here, that's the clip that in the forum uh, one guy was talking about popped out and then the shaft pops out uh, when he was holding it and going full throttle and his friend was holding it and the the amount of uh, torque and energy that this motor uh, provides created enough lift to separate that and uh, the propeller then lifted off there. Uh, normally that wouldn't happen unless you were trying to lift something that was way over its rated capacity or you were actually holding it down and gunning it full throttle. Uh, but that clip is also the same clip you would use if you were to purchase motors and had to re reverse the shaft. Uh, I've got a set downstairs. I'm going to take a look at those later and see if they're already set up like this. I bought those from Hobby King, uh, but it is the same motor, and these feel good. They're heavy. They're solid. They feel like really good uh, components. So for those, let's do the motor mounts. Okay, and from the assembly video, it's pretty straightforward. These pieces sit underneath. The motor then, after it, uh, uh, these, uh, the frame, bolts through the frame, you put the bolts up underneath, uh, and that then in turn holds the motors in place. It's pretty uh, simple and, and clever and very lightweight and effective design. I'm pretty psyched about that. I love this, uh, I love this airframe so far. We'll see how she does when we load it up with stuff, but uh, I can't imagine getting anything that's any lighter. Uh, and still maintains the kind of strength needed to uh, put something in the air. Alright, so this is the power harness 
And one of the upsides to this versus using a uh, little power distribution board is that these things do not emit uh, anywhere near the same amount of uh, RF interference as one of those little square power boards often do uh, because all of the electronics are bare, they're unshielded, they're all there and they emanate a lot of uh, electromagnetic radiation. This limits that um, so you're bound to have less interference. I've read in forums where uh, having this has solved problems with uh, FPV video interference and things like that. This is really nicely done too. These are these are well put together, so good to see. Battery plate, the clips for that. Let's put all of that in here. We've got some little jelly-like uh, rubbery mounts to offset that frame. Uh, the tools necessary to, to install it. A couple of invisible the receiver. So this is the orange uh, spectrum compatible satellite receiver. This will plug into the thalamus. Uh, then this becomes um, uh, this little antenna here, uh, the point at which your radio, your handheld controller radio, connects and communicates with uh, the flight controller. So very, very small. Actually much smaller than I thought it was going to be. USB cable, some have said that uh, this one is not working well for them, you just never know. So if you're having trouble loading firmware onto the thalamus uh, and on the hypo, I imagine too, um, first thing you should do is play with this cable a little bit, see if it's seated tightly on both ends. If that doesn't work, get yourself another one, it's very common, obviously, anybody who's got a couple of USB doohickeys, a camera, a few things like that. Uh, hopefully we'll have another one of these laying around. Give it a try. Let's see, thalamus two. I don't know, let's see, what does this connect to? The hypo? We'll have to find out, so. A couple of uh, pads to mount it, a little bit of Velcro, I'm sure we'll hear about that in the instruction video. Um, and then of course these are the ultrasonic uh, 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 modules, a pair of them that sit underneath and point downward and uh, essentially from a meter, roughly a meter, maybe up to two meters, gives you, uh, gives the uh, quadcopter the ability to uh, locate the ground and determine the distance. Um, so that it um, can auto land or do other things based on how close it is to the ground. So, don't know how much I'll be using that, but uh, we'll see. Alright, let's look. This is a GPS receiver. So this GPS module will sit on top. And essentially that comprises the, the module and the, um, uh, the antenna. Uh, this then would connect to the uh, hypo uh, to give it the uh, GPS data it needs to do its job. It should be the receiver antenna, looks like. Some mounts, go through holes in the frame. And then this extender for the antenna, so this would go back to the board, this would go through and then the antenna would mount and then you can adjust it and keep in mind that this type of antenna has a radiation pattern as if you put a frisbee or something on top of it so it goes into more of a cone like this if you're here there's a dead spot so you wouldn't want to point this where you are because that would be it you would want to make sure that you had the broadside pointed towards you 
generally speaking, I think you would have it pointing down when, it, uh, when you're in the air, uh, assuming that the, it's not interfering with the landing gear or clearance. I'm going to put all that stuff in here. Okay. We're getting close to the end here. This is the optional camera mount. So this is going to go on the front. And yes, it does use rubber binders to uh, hold it in place and to uh, dampen the vibration. I'll have to play with that and see I haven't actually even looked at how this looks mounted on there, but you can see you can mount different types of cameras. They provided a couple of different ways to do that. Some Velcro. I've got a GoPro I'm going to mount on here. And next to it I have an FPV camera that I'll probably mount in the same place. Although, I'm going to play around with putting the camera on the side and having the quadcopter move forward and then having my FPV camera facing forward and doing uh, side shots so I can like circle something, uh, the object of interest or something like that and get a, uh, a video of it and just play around with it and we'll see, just have fun with it. This obviously tilts. At some point, me and other people I'm sure are going to want to try to servo control that. Um, I'm not sure that there'll be any way to do any type of pan. I do have a pan tilt zoom for the FPV camera, but for the GoPro, just the tilt would be fine. So if we can servo control that, that would be awesome. I think there'll be a way to do that. It's just going to have to mess around with this a little bit. So, that is the unboxing of the uh, R10 Advanced with the optional uh, camera mount. And uh, with that, I'll end this one and we'll, we'll, we'll work on the next one, which will be uh, starting the assembly process.